Hey everyone, welcome to my weekly haul. Um, I know I don't do this every week, but uh, here's what I got this Wednesday. Picked up from my store. Mostly stuff on my pull list, but two things that I just pulled out, pulled off the racks. Um, first of all, Kaiju Max. Really excited for the end of season three. Not excited that it's ending, but excited to see how he ends it. Um, I think issues three and four dipped down for me a little bit, at least particularly one of them, um, the one that had the musical in it. But I'm, but issue five got really good again. This cover looks pretty amazing, so I'm pretty excited to see how season three wraps up. Deathstroke Annual. I've got a real Deathstroke problem. I now have a huge amount of Deathstroke comics to catch up on. I almost feel like I have to take a day off from work just to read Deathstroke. Maybe Deathstroke and Detective Comics, so I'm a bit behind on that too. Um, this annual promises to be about the origin of Clayface, I guess, the new revised version of Clayface. Um, he's certainly a visually fun character at this point, if not easy to buy into on a realistic level. The Beautiful Death number five. I think there's six issues in this, or is there five? Um, I've yet to read three and four, so now I have three issues to read in a row. It, um, I liked it a lot, but I, I kind of, I misplaced issue three. I have to find issue three so I can move on and read the rest. Um, it is a kind of semi-standard uh, post-apocalyptic kind of story. More the old-fashioned kind where there's almost like Omega Man or something where there's the cities are empty and you're wandering around the cities wondering what to do with yourself. Um, Dark Arc number five. Is this going to reach the point where I drop it or is it going to suck me back in? The last issue got really sloppy in my opinion. <clears throat> And this is one of those, I assume, it <laughs> doesn't have a title on it. I assume it's one of those all America's, not America's Best, what are they calling it? All American Comics or something. Um, all-time Comics. It's one of those all-time comics. It says All-Time Comics 6, Justice, number 2. Um, it's got Noah Van Skyver pencil, so Noah Van Skyver doing a superhero comic. I don't know if he's done that before. Of course, it's a mock superhero comic. <clears throat> Despite what some people say, um, I think both the Van Skyvers are very talented gentlemen. Um, but because I saw someone on Twitter uh, having a tweet off with uh, Ethan Van Skyver himself and putting him down and telling him he had none of the talent of his brothers. So I love the colors in this. And this seems like an extra thick issue. I wonder if this is going to be a a wrapping up point or something. I think this must be a variant cover. Um, no, I guess it's not. I guess it's the non-variant cover. Anyway, I don't even know what I paid for this because I don't see a price on it. <coughs> That's strange. It was in my poll. Um, so they, uh, I don't see a breakdown of the prices of what I paid for in the my 25% off. Here is Eternity, I think the final issue. I think it's a four issue mini. <clears throat> I'm really curious as to how this can be wrapped up or resolved or even explained in one more issue the way it's been going, although it's been an awesome ride. And I'm also really psyched for the second issue of Grave Transfers, which was a really good horror comic in issue one. Um, nothing startlingly new but very well done and a lot of fun and with a very cool art style <clears throat> at first glance very cool cover colors too and speaking of cool art and colors the final issue of the second volume of space riders the galaxy this one called the galaxy of brutality um my general feeling about this is the art is better in this than the first four issue arc of Space Riders, but maybe the story's a little weaker. Um, but the art is so uh, fairly unique in comics right now that it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun just for the art. Now, here's 
I already damaged copy of the first issue in the Milk Wars saga. Is it called saga? No, just Milk Wars. Justice League of America versus or with the Doom Patrol. I have no idea what the current Justice, there's a separate Justice League of America compared to the Justice League. I have no idea what's going on there. Hopefully that won't matter. Um, I have been reading Doom Patrol. And this looks like a Frank Quietly cover. It's not very detailed or anything. My daughter saw, saw this cover and said it looked like the artist was being lazy. <laughs> um, and then we got uh, issue two of Adventure Finders, the um, fairly obscure, um, what's the guy's name? The creator of this, Rod Espinoza, uh, great children's, children and young adult um, comic book maker. Adventure Finders is a rather odd title, but the first issue was really good, and then we got issue three, and I had to special order issue two, and that came in. And I'm super psyched for Mystic University, because um, I really, really enjoyed the first the first issue. Um, a wonderful, wonderful take on the magic side of the D the magic and horrific side of the DC universe. I got The Creeps with a Richard Corbin cover, which is great timing since he just won the huge prize in France, the Angelum Grand Prix prize. prize. I probably pronounced it totally wrong. But um, my comic book guy, the there's a comic book artist who works for my comic book store, and he thought that was uh, lesser Corbin, but I still really dig it. I can see maybe because of the backgrounds are a little, and the poses are a little goofy, and the background's pretty bland, but I don't know. It still has that Richard Corbin magic to me. Oh, here's another one. I, just because I saw Dan Abnett on the title, put this, a long time ago, put Silencer on my, um, on my pull list, and now here it is. And now I realize that this whole, um, what are they calling it? The New Age of Heroes series is very, it's like trying to get back to the 90s style comics. So I'm a little nervous about getting, having put it on my pull, but I've put so many books on my pull and then dropped them after one issue. I think I'm gonna give it a few issues um, for Dan Abnett mostly. Um, oh look, another fold out cover. Maybe this one, maybe this one will connect to the one I have from Damage. Um, in Damage, I liked the art, much to my surprise. Well, if you saw my uh, comic book thoughts, but I, the story was just m not much there at all. And then I also have got Image Plus, which I assume continues. Yeah, the main thing I'm reading in here is the few pages of Witches. I keep meaning to find time to go back and read all the interviews with the creators and stuff. Image is moving towards being something I collect in trades more often and less often in single issues, which is, I don't know, complex issue. Then um, Black Mask has a new one-shot graphic novel, a little oversized. It's the same size. It's magazine-sized. It's uh, bigger than a regular comic. Um, called Eternal. For an incredibly reasonable price of $7.99, which with my store discount was $6. Um, and I just thumbed through it and the art looked really cool. It seems to be about a Viking girl, maybe. Um, so I thought, I, you know, at that price with this cool art, I'll give it a shot. I don't know anything about the creators, Zadowski, Lindsay, and Kniff, but a lot of Black Mask is pretty good and seeing this, uh, Seeing this art, it looks like quite the gutter loss. Um, but there is no original floppy. This is the original edition, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> so that's my poll for today. I hope uh, you guys got lots of comics, or as many comics as you wanted. And I think I'll be back pretty soon with even more comic book thoughts. And some burping. <clears throat> so talk to you all later. Bye-bye.